，我说什么？连板的片，那里面是 rush me， 我会从你的 happy tell you， 所以我会听，就是啊。我 remember the changes that I went through. I started saying no to everything. I started to eat more junk food. I was putting on weight. I wasn't feeling good about myself. My confidence was going down. My anxiety was going up. I wanted to be asleep more than I did awake. I didn't want to leave the house. Caught up. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a bad way. I noticed I was going down this slippery slope. So I had to try and catch myself. So I did. I called an emergency meeting. In this emergency meeting, I invited three people. That's the invite. Right. Myself and I. <laughs> and when no one was home, I went to my bedroom and I got this big mirror. And this sounds crazy, but this really helped me. I interviewed myself. The first thing I said to myself, I'm going to ask some questions, I'm going to answer them truthfully, I'm not going to lie. Because if I lie, I'm lying to myself. And I'm me. So I know when I'm lying, that's just weird. So tell the truth, how you feeling? I said, I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling depressed. And I stopped myself, I said, you never used that word before. Elaborate, what do you mean? So I said, well, when I'm with my friends, I'm present, but I'm not present. My mind just keeps going around in circles. But why, but why, but why, but why? Day in, day out. I have to think clearly for about three to five seconds, then I keep going back to the same recycling thoughts. Why, why, why? So I said, okay, how's everybody else that's involved in this? How are they feeling? So I said, well, everyone's just getting on with life. So it's just you. Yeah. Okay. What would happen if we kept this up for the next six months? Let's half a year. I said, well, I'm going to be overweight, I'm not feeling good about myself, my speaking career is going to crumble, I'm going to be in a bad place. Okay. What would happen if we kept this up for the next year, 365 days in a quarter? And I stood staring in the mirror for about 30 seconds, I couldn't think of an answer. I just knew it was going to be bad. So I said, okay, do I want to change? Do I want to be happy again? Yes. Do I understand that I've gone from happy ten to low to quickly. If I try to jump back to happiness quickly, I could fall just as quick. So while I'm at ground zero, I've got to start building my foundation over a period of time. Am I willing to go on that journey? Yeah. So what's the first thing I need to do? I need to start small. Because if I set myself a big challenge, big goal, something big to achieve, if I fail it, I go even lower. So I've got to start ridiculously small to start with. So I decided I'm going to start making my bed. The need to start made it every single day. No creases, like a premier in bed. And if I went out on a bad day, came back home, opened that bedroom door, I'd see a very new bed. And I'd tell myself, you do that. But I'd use the power of my imagination. I'd times that feeling by 10. So I'd walk into my bedroom and I'd say, oh, Mr. Bennett, no creases today. Okay, good job. And I'd have a little joke for myself. That little joke would come out for a split second then disappear. But that was my reminder. You're still there, but keep working with that voice So next, I wanted to get back into running. I put on weight, I wasn't feeling good about myself. So I woke up in the morning, went to my wardrobe, got my t-shirt, took me five steps to go to my chest and drawers to get my shorts. Within those five steps, I put myself out that I've done that my day. Why am I talking myself out of this when I know I need to do it? Simplify it. So what I did, I put all my running equipment, and I put it in one pile. So when I woke up in the morning, I walked out one pile, I get myself dressed. Close my eyes, I have to, minimal thoughts in my head, go outside, shut the front door, okay, I'm outside, I'm dressed to run, I get some money. Now what I would do, instead of running, say, 5K, I run 6K. I push myself a little bit more than what I said I would. When I got to that 6K, I'm trying this way, what? That weight loss, that feeling of, ah, I did it, I felt good, I felt good. And when I paid attention to my head, I times that feeling by 10, marathon man's back. And I noticed that little voice would stick around for a little bit longer. That was me understanding, I'm working with myself. I'm healing, I'm healing. So next up, I wanted to get back into work. I neglected speaking for so long, just sitting in my little dark hole, feeling sorry for myself. So I decided any energy I've got left in the day, I'm going to have to reach out to schools, to companies, and try and get more work in. I was contacting near 100 companies and schools every single day. And I kept this going for about three weeks. And the third and final week, I received an email. The email read, hi Anthony, just want to say thank you for your email. Been on your website, love what you do. We want to fly you out, we'll be speaking in front of this many people, we're going to feed you, we'll send you back home. Will you be willing to come and speak at our event? I forgot who they were. I contacted so many people, I was thinking, who are they? So I clicked on their website, I scrolled down a little bit, and it said, Sydney, Australia. My biggest ever speaking engagement, 
pain for me being in the lowest of my lows. But because I kept working with myself over a period of time, it allowed that amazing opportunity to happen. So when I got to Australia, I reminded myself, it doesn't mean that I've made it, it doesn't mean that I'm a celebrity. I'm just a guy from London in Australia speaking, I'll be back home next week trying to get more working. So when I got to Australia, I told myself, soak it all in. I still remember what that stage smells like. I still remember how tight people in Australia hug when we greet you. I still remember what their wildlife looked like. Their wildlife looked like Pokemon. They're completely different animals. <laughs> but I remember it all. So if I'm ever in a bit of a mental trip, I've got so many happy memories that can help boost you back up to the happier high numbers. 2018, got the news that my mum had breast cancer. And this threw me inside out, back to front, upside out. I didn't know what to do because there was nothing I could physically do to stop my mum from having cancer. I thought the best thing I could do was keep myself busy. So I went to this cycle where I'd wake up at 4 a.m., I'd get on my laptop, I'd start to work, I'd work in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, the night time, early hours, and I'd go to sleep, about two or three hours sleep, and I'd wake up and I'd start that cycle again. I thought that was the best thing for me. I got invited to be a big tour to have like 400 people, NHS people, and loads of big leagues in the room, and they put me up in a hotel the night before because I'm at the event. And what I usually do when I was in the room, I stand on stage just to get an idea of what it's going to feel like, but I didn't do that. So when they announced me onto the stage, bear in mind that I had two hours sleep, I woke up that morning feeling strange. My eyes were red, burning, stinging. I was writing my thank you speech, and nothing was really sticking in my head. I just felt spacey. I got to the stage, started to speak. All of a sudden, my mind went blank. And I couldn't think of a word, a sentence, nothing was coming to me. I was standing in front of all these people. So I managed to fumble to give a thank you. I took myself off stage to a little quiet room, and that's what I told myself. Burn yourself up. You've been pushing, 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 pushing with no resting time, no time for recovery. I thought I was Superman. By going through that burnout, burnout, it taught me a lot about self care and really looking after myself. Advice you've probably heard your whole life. Make sure you drink enough water. Make sure you get enough sleep. I thought I was Superman. But now, I've always got water with me. I'm always checking in with myself. A micro thought, just a little, how am I doing? Am I happy 10? Am I 7? Am I 4? Who or what is going to make me feel like this? What do I need to do to get myself back down to happy numbers? I don't want to see myself dip, 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 because the longer I dip and the longer I fall, the longer it's going to take me to come back up. So I'm always checking with myself throughout the day just to make sure I'm good. If we look at well, some of the negatives I've been through in my life, they're quite bad. And what they've done is they've given birth to loads of positives. Things that can apply to myself and just help me build this buzzword we've been hearing again resilience. So how about I build resilience? With resilience, I see there's three stages to it. Stage number one, you go through crap. And if you haven't gone through crap, you just haven't gone through crap yet. Stage number two, you have to leave a period of time. This could be a day, week, month, year, it could be a decade. Stage number three, and then you have that ah oh, moment. And you realize, ah, oh, I had to go through that for that to happen. I had to lose that friend to find a better friendship group. I had to lose that job. And a better opportunity. Because life works in weird and mysterious ways like that. You have to give yourself that time as well. Because in the moment when it's happening, it won't make sense. When I was in hospital, it wasn't making sense. You have to leave that time as well. Now I know I'm probably going to be alive for another 200 years. <laughs> in my next 200 years, more bad things are going to happen to me. It doesn't stop there. Because no one's life goes like this, and no one's life goes like this. Life is a little bit more like a heartbeat when it goes up and down. I feel like I'm a little bit more prepared because I've already been through the negatives. But I appreciate my negatives as much as I do my positives. I appreciate my depression. When was the last time you heard someone say that? The reason I appreciate my depression was because it taught me the blueprint. It gave me the blueprint. So if I was ever becoming depressed again, I know what I need to do to get myself out of it because I've been through it already. It's helped me build my resilience. So, in life, when you go through ups and downs, remember everything's temporary. When you're feeling low in your lows, it's temporary. A year from now, or five years from now, you'll feel very, very different. When you're buzzing, glowing, you feel like it's going to last forever because you're in that moment. It's temporary. When you feel good in that moment, there's something bad might happen later on down the line and you land back in that moment. So always have that in the back of your mind. Everything's temporary. It's how you're feeling, you won't be happy, how you're feeling in time. July 15th. 
last year, my mum passed away. Uh, breast cancer has spread to her lungs, and her lung cancer has spread to her brain. And I remember we used to have FaceTimes throughout the day, so it was during lockdown. And we had this emotional FaceTime, and my mum was saying to me that she just hopes she's alive long enough to see my daughter. Because as she was deteriorating, my wife was becoming more and more pregnant. So it was in a way her race against time to stay alive long enough. My mum, she passed away one month before my daughter was born, so they never got to meet each other. And that really, it really, really hurt me. And I thought, and I was, quite, I was quite scared for myself when my mum passed away, because I thought I turned into a bad person. I thought I started doing negative things, being bad towards people, because I had that excuse of, I don't know my mum, who needs anybody to tell me anything. When my mum passed away, the opposite thing happened. I started to care and love people more. Because subconsciously, what's happened through my mum's life was I was absorbing everything she was going through and how she was around people, how she treated people, and now that's instilled within me. As I'm going through my day to day, I keep saying to myself, What would my mum do in this position? What would my mum do? And that helps me get through life. I took away a lot of nuggets from my mum's life, and I'd like to wrap up by sharing just a couple with you before I end the stage. Number one, love. I've learned to love myself, to love the people around me, my friends, my family, to show love to strangers people I've never met before, and to love moments in my life. Now, what's a moment? You probably experienced moments today. When you showed up, you turned the corner, and saw one of your colleagues, one of your friends, and you gave each other that smile, it's that little feeling that comes with that smile, that's a little moment. But the question is, when you have these moments, do you capture them, or do you just let them slip? That was Eminem. <laughs> 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 Sometimes we live automatically. We just wake up, go to a come and we eat, scroll, go to sleep, wake up, and it comes a cycle. Live a bit more manually. Feel your way through life. Capture your moments. How do you capture your moments? You pay attention to your senses. Would you enjoy looking at, watching? Would you enjoy listening to, hearing? Would you enjoy touching? Would you enjoy being around? Because these are the things that are going to give you moments. When these things give you moments, Remember how they feel. Remember when my mom was deteriorating, I gave her this big hug and I made sure I absorbed every feeling within that hug. So now, if I'm ever thinking of my mom, I still remember that feeling of that hug and that will last me forever. So capture and store the moments that will help you later on in your life. Number two, be kind. Be kind because you just never know. You never know what people are going through, you never know what people are going through, and you never know what people may face later on in life. Now, just an example, when I first stepped onto the stage, wild guess, you didn't know that my life consisted of these, th these things. I may just look like the average Joe. When I look out at the audience, I see you guys, I just see face value. I don't know the layers or the depths of you guys, but I can guarantee you there's some people in this room today that have gone through some horrendous things in their life. There's some of you that are currently in a very, very dark place where you put on that brave mask. Some of you in life, later on in life, life is gonna give you what I call a life shot. That's when life slaps you and you just have to figure it all out again. So be kind to people because you just never know. Lastly, help others as and when you can. Because when you help someone, that feels good. When someone helps you, that feels good. It's a win-win. There's no need for negativity. If you need to be negative towards someone else on purpose, always remember the back of your mind has got nothing to do with that person. It just means you need to work a little bit more with your own dream. So like I said, when you work with a dreamer, you feel good about yourself. When you feel good about yourself, you tend to naturally want to help people. When you help people, you tend to feel good about yourself. And it creates that recyclable energy and you provide that positive wave. So I want to wrap up by saying the biggest thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day today to be here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for not going to Martha's at me. I really appreciate that. And I think we've got maybe a minute or two if anyone has any questions. Very transparent, so please feel free to ask any questions you do have when you're here one day. But just a big, big thank you. And if you'd like to uh, go through the journey, feel free to scan the QR code. So, big thank you.
appreciated, but um, our condolences as well for your mum. Um, but I think that was inspirational. I uh, hope you all got something out of that. I think I'm definitely taking away, I'm going to dream more, I'm going to say yes. So you can test me on that later. But I really appreciate that. Has anyone got any questions, Francis? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 